and welcome to my channel. My name is Rebecca and today I'm going to be sharing with you guys five things you can do under five dollars in Indianapolis. Um, these are things that you can do really any time of the year. Um, good for both children and adults. Uh, something that if you've lived in Indianapolis for a long time you can still do. You can play tourists in your own town or these are great things that you can do if you're visiting the city. So if that sounds like something you'd like to learn more about, stay tuned. All right, so my first recommendation is a free one. Can't get any better than that. And it's with the Indiana Landmarks Association. They do a free tour uh, downtown Fridays and Saturdays. I'm gonna link the details below in case I'm slightly off, but I think it is Friday and Saturdays. Um, it's led by volunteers, costs absolutely nothing. I did this last September when I moved back to Indianapolis. Um, I did the tour, I was the only one, and it was amazing. Um, it was a um, older lady, she was very knowledgeable. Um, if you've ever been downtown Indianapolis, that circle is not very large. I did not expect us to be there for the full hour, but she did an amazing job giving me the history about the circle, the city, the building. So if you're an architecture person, it's super interesting. Um, there is some interesting old buildings with like art deco design even on the inside and she took me in. We went into a couple of the businesses that still had some of the old um, architecture um, and it was just fabulous. So I cannot recommend the free tour enough. Um, I think I already mentioned this, they don't allow tipping and you'll want to, they do such a good job. So that is by far my number one recommendation. All right, so recommendation number two is Garfield Conservatory. Um, if you are from the Chicago area, you're like, wait, we have a Garfield Conservatory. So yes, the one in Chicago is much bigger. Um, it is much nicer, but there is an equally, you know, decent sized one in Indianapolis. It's on the south side. And so it's in a park. Um, it's really underrated, I think. It's beautiful. Um, there's a koi pond, lots of trees, lots of flowers. There's benches so you can just sit inside. So today I'm filming it, it's March, it's snowy, it was seven degrees when I woke up this morning. You know, I really need some warmth, I need some sunshine. And so Garfield Conservatory is a great place to go in winter if you need just to feel warm. It does cost a couple bucks, I think it's just around $5. Again, I'll link below the actual numbers, but I know it's under five uh, to go in. And so you can sit, you can read a book, um, you get to hear the water rushing of the koi pond. Um, it's just a really nice environment. And then if you go outside of the conservatory, especially in the springtime or summertime, they have a beautiful sunken garden. It's a British style garden. Um, they have hammocks you can lay out. It's really a great and I think underutilized park within the city. And so I would highly recommend just checking out that whole area. Um, also, right outside the conservatory on Saturdays, they have a farmer's market. So you really can make a whole day of doing the farmer's market, walking through the gardens, grabbing a book, laying in the hammock for a while, and then, you know, popping inside the conservatory to have a look around. Really, you can have a full day for five bucks. So just saying, it's a good thing to do. All right, so number three, free things to do. And this really speaks to my heart because it's free, it's art, and lots of times you can score free wine. So, ooh yeah, all three right there. Trifecta, if you will. Um, yeah, I just love First Fridays. It is where art galleries and um, places that display art are open up late. Um, crowds come out to really connect with the artist, connect with the art. It's very much a social thing, so even if you're not super artsy like me, um, I have no artistic ability whatsoever, but they really appreciate people that have talent in that area. So whether you're at the Harrison Center, Mass Ave, the Murphy Building in Fountain Square, there's just so many opportunities. And again, I'll link all the different places you can go to um, observe art, buy art, um, engage with the artists, but it's such a neat atmosphere. Um, oh, the Indianapolis Industrial Complex, that's another place to go. Um, and that is actually a pretty cool one because you just wander and wander and wander and it's a giant facility and if you ever get too lost know that there's a brewery on one end and a distillery on the other. Follow signs, you'll find some alcohol, you'll be in good shape. <laughs> but again, Mass Ave is great, um, especially if you just like popping around to different places. The Harrison Center is connected to a church and it has a really interesting vibe. 
Um, I believe that one usually has some free wine, so just saying. And then uh, the Murphy Building, I haven't been there in a while. I'm gonna check it out again soon. Um, several years ago, I used to go to that one. Um, I hear it's changed a bit over the years, but again, just a lot of interesting um, people are usually there that you can talk to. And again, get up and close with the artist. So highly recommend doing that first Friday of every month. All right, so my next recommendation are to visit the museums. Um, there are two pricey but really nice museums that have free days every once in a while, so I will uh, link below. Um, you can find out when those free days are. So both Newfield, which was the IMA Indianapolis Museum of Art, now Newfield, does do some uh, free days, as well as the Children's Museum usually does some free days as well, so check those out. But then we have some smaller kind of under the radar, I would say, museums that are equally uh, nice to visit. So we have the uh, Riley Museum Home. So if you think of the Riley Children's Hospital, um, it's that guy. So it's his house. You can go visit it again under five bucks. So in addition to kind of the bigger, well-known museums in the city, we do have these kind of smaller and niche ones that you can visit. They're pretty cheap. They only take about an hour to go through, but it's some interesting local history that you can learn along the way. So check those out. All right, so number five is kind of a weird one. And basically what I'm gonna share with you is where you can go to find free and cheap things to do. So instead of telling you about a specific place, I'm gonna tell you where I find a lot of my stuff so you can go out there and find stuff too. So first is meetup.com. I highly recommend if you're looking to meet other people to go do things with, um, it's a great avenue for that, and I'll have a whole nother video on that coming soon. But also it's a great place just to peruse because they know what's going on in the city. They know what festivals are going on, what events, what galleries are opening. And so even if you don't go to those events, you can look at the calendar and find out what's coming up, and then you and your friends can just go to those events. So Meetup is a great place to look for free and pretty cheap things to attend. Second is when you're on Facebook, there actually is an event section on your phone. And so make sure that you check the events that are happening, um, especially if you follow bars or restaurants, uh, museums, social clubs, things like that. They'll post when they have activities and then you can sign up and go. And again, a lot of them are free or pretty low cost. Uh, for example, Ash and Elm has a lot of activities going on. Um, West Fork, I think it's West Fork Distillery. They have a lot of uh, free activities that show up on their Facebook page. Um, I'll link some of my favorite ones below that often have activities that you can go to, but that's a great way just to be in the loop of what's going on. Um, and then you can just, again, with your friends and family, decide what you want to go to see. All right, and then another one you probably are not aware of is Yelp. Yelp actually has events. And so again, if you like to do reviews on Yelp, you can check out Yelp events and you can go to those. Um, those are events that restaurants and um, proprietors of businesses may um, advertise on Yelp. And then you can find out about them by looking at the event section. And so again, just another way to find out what's going on. And a lot of those are free or pretty low cost. All right, so I'm back with one bonus one that I forgot, and it really is important, and that's the fact that we have a lot of war memorials. Um, I was just looking it up, and Indianapolis devotes more acreage than any other U.S. city to honor the nation's fallen, second only to Washington, D.C., and so quite a few of them are free to go visit. Um, a lot of them are in the downtown area, and so um, if that's something that interests you, um, definitely would recommend checking those out. I've only been to, uh, I think, one, so that's definitely something on my to-do list. I hope to visit more, and if I do that, I will take you guys along for the ride, um, but definitely a great way to spend your time to honor those that have went before us. All right, well, that ends my video of five cheap things to do in Indianapolis, but I'd love to hear from you as well. In the comments below, tell me what your favorite cheap thing to do in Indianapolis. Um, perhaps we have the same one, or maybe I'll learn from you on what are some pretty cool things that I can do in the future. So would love to hear from you. Feel free to leave those messages below. Again, in the description box, I will link all the things that I talked about. And then if this is the type of video that you enjoy, something you wanna know more about, feel free to subscribe. All right, I'll check you out in my next video.